important when let's talk about uh, the immediate impact of Ida first because we have seen assessments of refineries being hit by four six perhaps even more weeks than that as a result of this does this really just exacerbate already uh, what are, what we are seeing is low stockpiles and strong demand yeah I think that's probably uh, that, that's a really good assessment actually um, at least at this stage, we see that it's about 75% of Louisiana uh, refineries seem to be um, down. Um, largely, um, uh, some of it has actually been caused by loss of electricity. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, on the production assets, that hasn't been as hard, hard hit. Um, this time around, it's been fairly benign. What we can see so far is uh, that most production outfits are um, in uh, OK sort of shape. So it's going to be relatively short-lived, we think. Um, but clearly, you know, it's a pretty fluid situation at the moment. Um, net, net, though, um, overall, demand continues to be relatively robust, uh, even though the, the Delta variant um, has had some impact on sentiment overall. Um, so the market is still undersupplied, in our view. Um, and so consequently, um, yeah, we still think prices continue to head higher as we go into the end of the year. Expectations from OPEC this week? Uh, well, I guess um, it's going to be an interesting discussion because, um, of course, uh, we are seeing at least at some of the higher frequency levels, uh, demand side uh, indicators have been a bit on the softer side. Um, so uh, we still expect them, though, to go through with their production increases. Um, as we said, the, the market is still relatively unsupplied. Uh, so the consequence of this is that um, uh, OPEC um, will add more production uh, as we go over the next couple of months. Um, but, of course, OPEC say it will remain flexible uh, and continue to assess those demand signals. Um, so while it can't be guaranteed that this will sequentially occur each month over the rest of the year, uh, we do think that some more supply will be added into the market. But, you know, Wayne, um, when the Federal Reserve, Jay Powell, made his his speech that was taken as, you know, devilish, they won't hike too fast and certainly won't taper too fast, etc., a lot of commodities got a pop, gold in particular, rising, people saying, oh, inflation, they're worried about it, but they're not going to do anything. How important is that for commodities where we are going ahead? I think it's definitely been really, really difficult on the reflation trades across the board over the last uh, couple of months um, as people sort of started to assess the risks, um, particularly around the Delta variant um, and what that could mean for growth overall. Um, I guess the, the, the point we would make is that um, I think I think Jay Powell, though, to be fair, did, a, did an excellent job of communicating or separating this difference between rate hikes and the winding mm -hmm. back of, um, of of bond buying. And uh, basically, the pop in gold, in particular, came from inflation expectations, as you said, lifting a little bit, uh, but nominal rates actually uh, edged lower, and so consequently, real interest rates in the U.S. are still tracking around the negative one percent or so. Uh, the 10 year sort of tips level. Yeah. Um, so that's probably what's holding gold up. But we thought the gold rally in particular um, was uh, fairly lackluster, actually. Uh, it sort of popped and it's been under a little bit of pressure right. since. Um, that's largely because I think that risk is starting to come back into okay. the market. Yes. Um, people think that we get past this mm -hmm. uh, jump in Delta variants. And so consequently, uh, yeah. commodities more generally, particularly copper, still uh, under um, the supply side is still in yeah. deficit. Um, we think this supports prices okay. into the end of the year. Right, and S&P 500, is, its 12th new record in a month, is, is pretty uh, risk-on, isn't it? But I want to ask you about the dollar, particularly in light of Jay Powell, because this is always one of the big drivers for commodities. Absolutely. What do you see the dollar doing? So the dollar we have going a little bit weaker over the next couple of months um, because we thought that, um, at the very least, this sort of um, uh, pause in the cyclical rebound would actually get back underway, and we thought that, uh, this would be really, really positive for some of the periphery countries, such as Europe, for example. Um, we thought that, uh, at the very least, uh, we'd get that little bit of uh, downward pressure again on a broad dollar basis as we go into the end of the year. Um, next year, though, we think it's a completely different story. Um, once we start tapering, uh, once we uh, get into the sequence of how much the Fed are actually going to taper, because remember, it's not going to be about the timing from here of taper, uh, Jay Powell was pretty clear on that, that they're going to at least start by the end of the year. Uh, so it's actually going to be about the pace of taper, uh, how quickly the taper is finalised, uh, and then people will turn their minds uh, at the start of next year to when the first rate hike is going to be. Uh, we see that as pretty positive on the dollar going through next year. So we see the dollar falling back to around the sort of 113, 115 on a euro dollar basis. 
Um, so that's going to be a little bit of an additional headwind mm. uh, potentially for um, some of those cyclical commodities, such as copper, such as the other base metals, um, as well as oil to some degree. Uh, we, we have oil prices uh, mid right. next year at around the $75 a barrel mark. So, yeah, definitely stronger dollar next year, but a little bit more weakness as we go into the back end of this year.